Hello and welcome back to our series on expectations. I hope you're doing well. I'm Andy Blaylock. And last time we talked, we talked about greatness and about having a name for yourself or expecting great things for yourself. We kind of talked about who we would be, and now we would talk about what we would have, the expectations of what we would have. And the tricky part about this particular lesson is I could title it several things, many things, really, <laughs> And it wouldn't quite get the mark. I could say expectations about finances, um, expectations about wealth. But I thought probably the best idea is to use the Bible and to use language that the Bible uses. Conversely, use language that God uses, right? I think that's the best thing to do. So really what I want to talk about today is expectations about possessions. And that can mean a lot of things. That doesn't just mean stuff. Am I going to have two cars? Am I going to have five cars? Am I going to have one house? Am I going to have three houses? It's not just possessions, not just stuff. It's wealth. It's finances. It's what you're going to have in this life. And I think one of the best texts about expectations in the entire scriptures is what I'm going to read right now. This is Jesus speaking a parable. I love the parables of Jesus Christ. I hope this is a blessing to you. He says here, and it's something to think about, it says here in uh, Luke chapter 12, and verse, um, verse 15, it says, And he said unto them, he's talking to the people, Take heed and beware of covetousness, for man life consisteth not in the abundance of the things which he possesseth. And he spake a parable unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. So in other words, he's getting lots of stuff. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do, because I have no room where to bestow my fruits? And he said, This will I do. I will pull down my barns, and I'll build greater. And there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said unto him, this is important, Thou fool, this night shall thy soul be required of thee. Then whose shall those things be which thou hast provided? So is he that layeth up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. Listen, a lot of people have expectations for possessions, for things. You may think you're not one of them, but we all have hopes that down the line, years down the line, we will have more things than we do now. We have hopes that perhaps we'll be wealthier, perhaps we'll be more successful, perhaps we'll have more of a life of ease. Many of you go through a lot of hardships and trials, some physical, some emotional, and yes, some financial, or your family. And you hope that in the years to follow that you will lay for yourself many goods. The problem with this man is not that he built barns and that he invested. There's nothing wrong with that. In fact, Proverbs considers that wise, that if he made a profit, and he invested it in something to make more of a profit, to house more of his wealth, that's a good steward of what God has given him. But the issue is when he spoke to his own soul. In his own soul, he said, Thou hast laid up many goods, which was present tense. But then it says, Laid up for many years. Take thine ease, drink, and be merry. You see, the problem is he removed himself from the present and put himself in the future. That's expectations. He thought, not only am I rich now, but I'm going to be rich for a long, long time, and I can just sit back, relax, eat, drink, and be merry because I got it good, and this is what life is all about. And the reason why God called him a fool is because he lost his perspective. To him, the accumulation of wealth was all that matters. And the reason why we know that is because at the end of this benediction, at the end of this parable, Jesus Christ says that, he that layeth up treasure for himself. So he was laying up this treasure. This wasn't just him being a good steward of his business. He was laying up treasure. This is what his life wanted to be about. This was his investment. His spiritual investment was wealth. Remember later on, Jesus Christ approached a young rich man. That's important too, because usually a rich man is when they're older, they've labored and they toil, but no, no, he was young and he was rich. So he had everything that the world values. 
wealth, and youth. And he was a young rich man. Not only that, but he was also pious. He was religious, very religious. But Jesus Christ basically, in layman's terms, said, it's not enough. He said, sell everything that you have to the poor. And that wasn't in order to obtain salvation, not at all. And Jesus Christ knew that. He knew that this young man's heart was in his wealth. And the Bible says, and he went away sorrowful, sorrowful because he was very rich. He did not want to part with his wealth. A lot of people in this life have expectations to make a lot of money or at least try as hard as they can. And they will sacrifice every single virtue, every single personal shred of morality in order to obtain wealth. But they understand nothing about what God says here. It's interesting that the point of this parable wasn't at the end. It was actually at the beginning when he said, Take heed and beware of covetousness, for a man's life consisteth not in the abundance of the things which he possesseth. That's the whole point. Your life is not about how much money you can make, how relaxed you are, how much you can spend in ease. Everyone lives for retirement. Oh, if I can just make it to 65, then my life will be good. That's kind of an old way of thinking anyway. Most people can't even retire at 65, but a lot of people think that way. If I can just get to retirement age, then I can be like this man and say, take your ease, get my you know, fruit punch, sit back and relax through life. That's not the point of your life. That is not what it, as he says, it is not what it consists of. You exist. You are to give glory to God, to live for him, no matter what state of life you may find yourself in. The problem is we have to ask ourselves, are we content with whatever God gives us or are we going to want more? Remember at the beginning of this series that I had a blank piece of paper and it said, or I said, that it would be completely blank and it's signed a name at the bottom. Because again, God fills in the rest. You have to remember that that includes possessions that you may have expectations or you may hope to be vastly wealthy one day. But if that is not the will of God, are you content? Paul said, I have learned in whichsoever state I am therewith to be content. It's a learning experience. It is not something natural to us. We're not naturally content people. I used to go to Toys R Us and mom would buy me a micro machines and I'd instantly look at the back of the box and I want all the other ones on the box. I want all of them. <laughs> Covetousness is is bred within us. It's part of our nature. But are you content in God? The only way to thwart this expectation of possessions, which, by the way, is alive in all of us. You may not think you have it, but we all do, that we want something, and we want more than what we have now. And the only way to fight that is contentment in Jesus Christ. To, again, tell God whatever this blank piece of paper is, you fill it out, and my life is yours. Some of you will go on to accumulate great wealth, and some of you will not. But the important thing is that no matter what God gives you and where God leads you, is that you are content in him, that he is enough. See, the rich man didn't think, the young rich ruler, did not think that Jesus Christ was enough. He had to have his riches and follow God. He couldn't do both. Or he couldn't have one or the other, I mean, sorry. And that's the question. Is it enough for us? If Jesus Christ said, you lose everything, but you still have me, would we say, yes, Lord, that is enough? As long as I am the center of your will, as long as I'm with you, God will always provide for you. He will always fill your need, but not always your greed. <laughs> That's the same as for me. But is he enough for you? Ask yourself that question. What expectations do you have for your life? And I pray that it'll be as Jesus Christ admonished here, that he will always be enough. And as always, I hope this blessing, or I hope this series has been a blessing to you. And I hope you're doing well. And I'm really excited for the next one. I know I always say that, but I really am. So I hope you stay tuned. I hope you have a wonderful day. And God bless. And bye-bye.